Hi guys, air travel is routine. So when your plane takes off on a three and a half hour flight to Madeira, could you imagine landing anywhere else? This video is about our long awaited journey to Madeira and what we learned when things didn't go according to plan. Many of our tips might be obvious, but they helped us to cope when our holiday hung in the balance. Paradise was waiting. Just how long would it take us to get there? I'm Joe Reed for Itchyak, where we believe that planning, executing and enjoying your holiday should be easier. In this video, we'll tell you the story of our air diversion and what we learned from that experience. If you want to get straight to our top 10 tips, we have created another video that gets straight to it. It's linked in the description below. Let's get to it. We had flown out of London Gatwick before and as we arrived and prepared to board our flight, we had no thought that this flight would be different from those we had taken before. The journey would take us from London's Gatwick to Funchal in Madeira. It should have been a simple three and a half hour flight. The journey was routine with the food and the tax-free service on board and we relaxed as we flew closer to our destination. And then the captain made an announcement over the PA system. It's an interesting development, the captain has just announced that uh, due to strong winds we can't land uh, at the moment, so we're going into a holding pattern and we'll see how things go from there. So, uh, we're not sure whether we're going to land at all in Madeira today. Interesting stuff, we'll see how things go. Tip number one have emergency entertainment, whether it's an interesting book, a movie, or a series downloaded from Netflix or Amazon Prime or even the airline's magazine, a bit of escapism might be what the doctor ordered. Because you have no control about what's about to happen, focusing on the problem is a waste of your time. So best focus on something else. While you're in the air waiting for your decision with or without your emergency entertainment, whatever decision that comes will be assisted if you Two, don't become emotionally invested in the situation. Become emotionally invested. Don't become emotionally invested. Become emotionally invested. As mentioned, this is out of your hands. The pilot wants to land and land safely for his own sake, for his crew, and for you and the other passengers. Of course, staying away from your emotions is easier said than done, especially on limited sleep. While Madeira was hanging in the balance, we were told about different destinations where we could possibly land, failing Madeira. Canary Islands to the south, Porto Santo close by, and Portugal to the northeast. After several announcements about our predicament, our captain began descending without further comment. We'd been descending for about 10 minutes and had got low enough to see the houses on the cliff, now the same height as a plane. But just as our hopes started going up, the engines roared into life and we banked a hard left. We then ascended and kept on going away from Madeira. It feels like we're going somewhere else. Uh, Trixie records we're going to Canary, I think. Grand Canary? Yeah. Tenerife? Anywhere nice? So 
apparently they're going somewhere nice, so uh, we'll see where we uh, land. Speaking. Uh, first of all, apologies for the slight delay in getting uh, a response to you. It's been very busy at the front of the aircraft, as you can imagine. Uh, essentially, when we arrived into uh, Front Channel a little bit earlier on, as I said to you before in the descent, we knew that we would have to hold because the weather and the wind was out of limits. We went to base and held over Porto Santo on the neighbouring island, where the weather there isn't very good either. Um, there was an Air Portugal aircraft that was slightly in front of us, and uh, the wind came into limits. So the Air Portugal aircraft, they made an approach and they managed to get into Madeira this afternoon. Uh, at that opportunity, we saw that there was a break in the weather so we took the opportunity to start the approach unfortunately as you can see we managed to get the aircraft configured and we were quite low down overhead the water uh, just to the east of the airport and at that particular moment in town air traffic control called back up to tell us that the wind was out of limits again so the airport effectively was unusable at that stage we had to do a go around we've got enough fuel to hold and then divert somewhere so at the moment we are actually considering our divert options we won't be going into front channel Madeira at this particular moment in time it isn't safe to that end we're going to make a plan at the front of the aircraft and i'll certainly come back to you once we've organized that and essentially though we are heading back northbound at the moment we've got a couple of options between faro and lisbon we're just going to make that decision over the next 10 minutes and obviously we'll organize with our company and uh, some other travel arrangements for you as I say, the most important thing for us here is, general for me personally, is the safety of myself, my crew, and of course you as our prepared paying passengers. Um, at the moment it just isn't safe to land into Madeira, and that's the reason that we're moving on. We will certainly come back to you with further updates. In the meantime, we're going to turn the seatbelt signs off very shortly, so for those people that would like to use the facilities, you're more than welcome. And uh, I'll get back to you again in around about 10 or 15 minutes with a further update on the progress. Thank you. Folks, uh, we're diverting. It's official now. The captain updated us after another 15 minutes. We would be going to Faro in Portugal. It was another hour before the Portugal Cape came into view. I'd never seen what feels like the corner of mainland Europe. On the ground, we were kept in the plane until a decision could be made. The captain and crew did their best, but we weren't where we wanted to be, and it felt like the decisions were slow to conclude. Tip three, have access to the internet. On the Portuguese tarmac, we were a little tense. The situation was made slightly easier when we arrived in Portugal because we had phones with internet and a great package with the mobile or cell phone company. We were also signed up with Skype, and had some credit sitting on our account, so we were able to call ahead to the accommodation and keep them updated, or ask them not to cancel our booking, call ahead to the car rental company for the good that did, see if there were any other flights that were landing to give us a sense of whether we might be going back to attempt a second landing. It can be frustrating if you can't use your phone or internet, which is true in so many international airports. So if you're the kind of person that is gonna go nuts if they can't get a signal, it's probably best that you resort to your emergency entertainment. Not much information is going on at the moment. It looks like, um, according to Trish's research, that we might be going back tonight from here. So uh, not necessarily a, uh, waiting here in our hotel or anything else. So yeah, interesting development. Latest weather in Funchal is uh, still very much out of limits at the moment and uh, certainly looking at the forecast is due to be like that all night. Um, a couple of options 
that we've got we're still working on. Uh, I'm on the phone on the other hand with uh, Luton at the moment. So just bear with us. We will come back to you again. We will keep you informed with what's happening. Uh, just in the meantime, obviously, we're just trying to get uh, ourselves sorted here at the front of the flight deck. I'll come out to speak to you very shortly. If you can just be patient for the next 10 15 minutes, I'll certainly come and speak to you once we've managed to organise it. Thank you. The captain came out and told us that they had checked the weather report and that there was no likely change in the weather. So EasyJet operations were going to host us in a hotel overnight. Time seems to drag in these situations. We disembarked and went through customs and then slowly filtered into a large open area of the terminal and then out to the coaches, which must have been over the, about the duration of an hour. When the coaches were full, we left for the hotel. When Trixie found out the name of the hotel, she went straight onto booking.com to check out the reviews and see where they were going to send us. It turned out to be a five-star hotel, which was not bad at all. Our coach arrived at the hotel first and being at the front of the coach, we were able to get checked in without the crowds that inevitably arrived. It turned out that we were near the beach, so the next morning we took a look around. Tip four, make the best of it. Look, it's never ideal to be in one place when you have planned somewhere else. With a bit of research, you could find something to enhance your experience. So look into your hotel and the surrounding area to see if there's something of interest. The Algarve is famous for its beaches, so we went to get a piece of the action. Uh, yeah, just leaving the hotel for the beach. Uh, so as we're here, we'll just have some, a little look around. It's uh, yeah, quite interesting. Nice architecture, I guess, of the South, uh, South Europe. So yeah, interesting stuff. So this is something we won't see much of in Madeira, and that is beach. So uh, I'm leaving back to the airport now. Oh, very bright outside. We got back in time for our breakfast and found some front seats in the coach to allow us to attempt to avoid the crowd when we checked in to our flight. Queuing. We were there for uh, about 20 30 minutes before we were served, um, and uh, we've been waiting and chilling out for about 30 minutes now. And there's still a huge queue waiting for Madeira. And my first Portuguese tart in Portugal. We took to the air a second time in 24 hours. The in flight food and tax free service took place during the hour flight. But as we got closer, things did not go according to plan. 
Um, so we've not seen any improvement in the weather since the last time I've spoken to you. Uh, we've been speaking to our ops department as well, obviously trying to keep them informed of the picture. They're having a look at the weather from their end. And uh, we're just speaking to air traffic control in terms of our diversion options, as I said to you before. At the moment we've got Puerto Santo, that's full because everybody's been diverting into there. There's no um, look, it doesn't look like there's going to be anybody leaving there soon to allow us to get in. So uh, our ops, because it's a little bit closer, we're looking now to divert possibly towards the south. So that would be towards the Canary Islands and uh, obviously pick up some fuel there. Uh, we're going to be here for probably another 10 minutes though. We're going to keep our fingers tightly crossed. We're going to hope beyond hope that the weather does come back into limits for us. Uh, but like I said, another 10 minutes and then it looks like we're going to have to make a decision and we'll be uh, diverting away again from the island. We can obviously see the island out the, uh, the window. Um, it's just the wind, as I say, it's just out of limits at the moment. It's gusting up to around about 30 miles an hour when the limit's uh, 25. So it's, it's just unfortunate that uh, the forecast hasn't materialised that we had hoped for. We were obviously very optimistic when we left Faro that we would be able to get in, otherwise we wouldn't have come. But um, at this stage, as I say, just out of limits and it's not safe to make the approach. So another 10 minutes, I'll get back to you again. We'll let you know what's happening. In the meantime, just uh, bear with us and we'll do what we can to keep you nice and comfortable. Thank you. Not landing on the first attempt was discouraging. But again, we were being told that we would not land after a night in the Algarve. You have to remind yourself that don't become emotionally invested. Don't become emotionally invested. Don't become emotionally invested. And if necessary, dig into your emergency entertainment. Okay, so the uh, captain has announced that we are going down to Porto Santo, um, which is close by. It means that we can wait it out. Where we were going to land changed from one announcement to the next. First, Porto Santo Airport was fully occupied and no space was going to become available. Then space became available. Then we started to land. Tip 5. Take what the pilot says with a pinch of salt. The pilot can be a great source of information, but you can imagine that they are getting information fed to them from the towers and using that information to keep you updated. But there are times when what the pilot says may be out of date even soon after they say it. But they may not be able to update you because of the fast pace of the cockpit. Just realise that this is the case and take what the pilot says with a pinch of salt. And know that he or she will have your safety at heart. Uh, we think we're landing in Madeira just from uh, where we're coming down. We haven't been told by the captain uh, anything at the moment. but. Uh, Whether it's through joining the applause, crying, yelling, letting emotions out is a natural way to diffuse. Perhaps don't yell. Have a safe journey on your way home today. We'd look forward to seeing you on board again soon. Hopefully it won't be as exciting next time. Uh, please have a pleasant stay in Vajra and Madeira and uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you. We made it!
so we made it to Madeira. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we made it to Madeira. <laughs> I almost we, can't believe it now. Like, we're yeah. in this car actually going. So. Yeah. So we've got the car. We're going to go. We, uh, yeah. uh, we're going to make our way to our first accommodation and just chill. We've lost a one day. It's okay. One day. It's yeah. Not the worst. It's not the worst that could happen, but it's not the best, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's time to go and have a little bit of a road trip. So yippee ki yay! The owner of the second accommodation in Madeira landed on a third attempt. So I think we should consider ourselves lucky. There are some takeaways that were already in place in the background that made it easier when this hit. Tip seven, have insurance. There's a well-known phrase in Great Britain to add insult to injury, meaning on top of something going wrong, there's another problem. When you're insured, you limit the financial sting coming from having non-refundable, non-exchangeable flights, car rental, and accommodation. Tip eight, have connecting flights with the same company. Connecting flights can be a real problem if you've booked with different airlines. A delay on one airline can mean you miss the next flight, so booking with one company makes it easier as they are obligated to get you on the next flight if the connection can't be made. Tip nine, give your flight details to the car company. When we got to Madeira, we got into a conversation with the car company about our ordeal. We asked them how long they would have held on to the car for, and they said up to 24 hours, but often as long as they can, if they know what flight you're coming in on. Despite having rung from Faro, they did not know which flight we were coming in on. We didn't know this at the time of booking the car, we may not have even had our flights booked, but if we had given them our flight number during the booking, they would have kept a careful eye on arriving customers and try to keep the cars booked for those specific bookings. Tip 10, don't plan anything important in the first few days. Plan in your heavyweights in the middle and end of your trip. This also gives you a build up to those things whilst protecting them from delays of this kind. What an ordeal, what an ordeal, what an ordeal. What an ordeal. If you have had any similar experiences, please let us know in the comment section below. Please like and comment so we know what videos you want to see more of and subscribe for more travel videos. Have grand adventures and we look forward to seeing you soon.